Hi, this is Lisa with Holland Designs Crochet. I've been asked to create a short stitch demo of my textured pinwheel blanket. It was a pattern from my 2021 Afghan Club. So I'm just gonna film and tell you how to start this, this square. So round one, we begin with chain four. And then we slip stitch in the fourth chain from hook to form a ring that we're gonna be working into. And then we work a chain two and that Chain two always counts as a double crochet in our stitch count. We work a double crochet into the ring. Then we work chain two for a corner. We work two more double crochets uh, into the ring. Another chain two for our second corner. Two more double crochets. Chain two for our third corner, two more double crochets into the ring. And then we finish up with a final chain two and a slip stitch in the top of that beginning chain two, which is also counted as a double crochet. So it's this is round one, four corners, uh, very similar to how a, a granny square might begin, um, except we only have two double crochet groups rather than typical three double crochets with a granny square. So I'll move on to round two. Round two begins with a chain two, and then it, we are told to back post double crochet around the post of the beginning chain two directly below. So this is this beginning chain two here. We're gonna work a back post double crochet around that post. So back post double crochet is from back to front to back around the post or upright portion of that stitch. So this is an increase that we're working here. Since we have now, rather than one stitch, we have two stitches. And then we are going to continue with round two here. And it says, I'm just checking the pattern as I'm working this. We're working two front post double crochets around the next double crochet. So front post is front to back to front around the post of that double crochet. And we're working two of those. So you work another one in the exact same place. So this is starting to create our texture um, for the pinwheel. And then we are told to work a chain two, which is again for our corner. And we continue in the same manner, working two back post double crochets around the next post and then two front post and then a chain two corner. So this is how round two is worked. So two back post, just make sure that I've got that placed properly. Two back post double crochets around that first double crochet at the side there, followed by two front post double crochets. And you can find many basic stitch videos on YouTube with uh, where people are intending to teach basics of crochet, basic stitches like front post and back post double crochet, where they will show you more slowly and very specifically um, how those stitches are worked. So again, two back post double crochets, and then two front post double crochets, chain two corner, okay, um, and we just have one more side to do now, don't we? So two back post again along this side, and then two front post. And then we just have our final chain two corner. And then we just join with a slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain two of round two. So I'm just gonna straighten it out here. We can see what we've got. So you can see how we've got the four chain two corners. Along each side, we have four double crochet. Okay, this is beginning of round three. So again, we're working a chain two, and then we're working two back post double crochets around the post of the next double crochet. So that's the second one. We're working two back post. So again, this is increasing.
And then we are told to front post around the next double crochet. So just a single front post double crochet around the next post. And then we are doing two front post double crochets around the post of the next double crochet. So you see we've gone from four double crochets along the side to six double crochets. And then we are again working a chain two corner. And then we just repeat this all the way around. I'll just show, show you one more time. So we're doing uh, the back post double crochet around the next double crochet. Then we're doing two back post double crochets around the next one. Then we're doing a front post double crochet followed by two front post double crochets. And as you're working the rounds of the square, the parent does tell you that it may look slightly rounded initially until you get to the final rounds of the square. So it will definitely shape up nicely into a proper square shape, but it may look a little bit um, some more circular as you're still working it. So, But this is what it looks like so far. So you just repeat that two more times and join. And this is basically round three. Okay, I've just completed round three. I'm just pulling the corners so you can see the square, the square shape of it. And then moving on to round four, very similar, just simply chain two, um, back post around the post, the next double crochet, and then two back posts around the next one. So this is where we're doing the increasing. And then we are doing a front post around the next two stitches and then two front posts around the last double crochet on that side and of course the front post and the back post are what create the pinwheel texture so it ends up being reversible so the front post create the rib texture on the front and the back post created on the back so that's what makes this pattern actually quite a reversible texture so we've just basically increased on this side, so now we've got um, eight double crochets along the side, and then just the chain two corner, and that's how we work round four. So I'll complete this round and come back and show you just the beginning of round five. All right, round five, again, same, same exact thing, chain two to begin, back post around the next two double crochets, and then the increase happens with the two back post double crochets around the next one. Then we have three front post double crochets. And then two front post double crochets around the final post there. So we've increased on round five so that we have a total of 10 double crochets along the side. So that is round five. And at the end of round five, you'll have four times 10. So you'll have a total of 40 double crochets and two chain two corners. All right, this is completed round five. And round six, begin with chain two back post around the next three stitches and then two back post double crochets around the next stitch and then we do front post around the next four double crochets and then two around the last one. So we've increased on this side now to 12 double crochets along the side. And again, we have chain two corner. So when we finish round six, we'll have 12 times four or 48 double crochets and four chain two corners. All right, round six is completed. 
And as we continue with rounds seven and eight, we'll begin to see this more of the squaring take shape and it will maintain the square shape so that these squares can be joined together um, neatly. So what we do for round seven, we're simply working some single crochet. So we do a chain one and we single crochet in the same space and in the next 11 double crochets along the side. So we have a total of 12 single crochets along each side on this round. And then in the chain two corners, we're working three single crochets. So when this round is completed, we'll have a total stitch count of 60 single crochets. Okay, so we just continue with this all the way around and then I'll come back and show you round eight. All right, I've just completed round seven and round eight is again a round of single crochet. So we do a chain one, single crochet in each single crochet around and place three single crochets in the center single crochet of each of the three single crochet groups at the corners. So we have three single crochets at the corner on round seven. So you're just placing three of them in the center single crochet at each of the corners. So this square is just simply finished off with two rounds of single crochet and then these are joined together with whip stitch so after you finish round eight you'll simply fasten off and you'll leave a longer length of yarn so that you can sew them together with whip stitch there's many youtube videos again showing assembly uh, whip stitch techniques or other sewing techniques to join squares together so you can simply watch something like that and learn that if you're not familiar and it can give you a really an easy way to join uh, the other thing you can do is, is always block your squares. There's videos online as well about blocking crocheted or knitted pieces. And that's just so that they sh are shaped um, properly and in a uniform manner. So I don't often block or don't really block anything. I often find that the squares also hold their shape as they're joined together so that you don't really need to do much in the way of blocking. But it can really create an extra... Um, professional look to your finished piece so you know feel free to do some blocking if you want to to make these squares really um, look amazing so I'll just finish up this round eight and then show you what it looks like completed um, I really enjoyed making this pattern so I really do enjoy textures and knit look textures and this design was inspired by simply a a sewn pinwheel quilt. So pinwheel quilts are done with different colored fabrics um, to create a pinwheel design and I thought it was pretty. It's kind of an old-fashioned um, style uh, design but I thought it would be pretty to try and create that in crochet but using texture rather than color changes and I thought it turned out really pretty so and I, I did make like a baby blanket size for the sample when I when I made this a couple years ago. And again, I just used the same materials as I'm showing you right now. It's a DK weight yarn and an H hook. So you can try diff different types of yarn and different hooks. So you can see my square still looks a little bit misshapen. But again, as you join them together, they definitely will stretch out and hold their shape better. And the reason they do misshape a little bit is simply because the textures are kind of pulling in different directions. But that's what the back of it looks like. And yeah, the front of it. So of course, this is always the right side of the pattern. You can always tell by looking at the single crochet stitches that it's the right side versus what the wrong side looks like. So as you get accustomed to what stitches look like, you'll be able to recognize that quite easily. So that is the completed pinwheel square.